In esports, there's no such thing as being too young to compete. You want to talk about a young yeah. guy under yeah. pressure. And I remember all those months in the summer. Haha, <laughs> oh, you should have never kicked Cajun B. Now this guy's just taken over the final, winning the game for you. But on the other end of the spectrum, a player's shelf life is usually not a long one. At some point, competitors get too old. You want to give it the last chance, obviously. Um, if you cannot, then, then at some point you can step down yourself and say, well, I can't do this anymore, I, I really can't improve myself and all that kind of stuff. So it's not about stopping at the top, it's more like giving the last chance you have to be at the top and if it doesn't work, just stop. There are, of course, the physical limitations that come with age, like slower reflexes or deteriorating eyesight. And let's not forget injuries accumulated during years of grueling practice and tournament schedules. So you obviously feel that you aren't playing very well, why? Uh, I have reasons. I, I had the hand injury and I, I, it's hard to come back for me. But for sure I will do my best in the finals, but yeah, it, it, I have reasons to play like I'm playing, but hopefully I will do good. And obviously, as the players get older, their priorities are likely to change as well. I have two kids and, and a wife who uh, definitely expects me to, to, uh, to be a father. I, uh, I don't dare to, uh, to sit around the computer after practice just to play for myself. Um, my wife would kill me if I did that. <laughs> Whatever the reason may be, most pros accomplish their greatest feats early on in their careers and transition into background roles like coaching or being an IGL, or they just retire. But Patrick Forrest Lindbergh isn't like most pros. Not only can he keep up with what the kids are into these days. Baby, 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 oh. Justin Bieber, that, that pop music, that swingity swooty. But this dusty ass 32 year old is still blowing minds almost two decades since his career began. He's finished off the frag and our attack is all that remains and he's only got 24 health us. This is so doable for us, gonna peak again and connect. What a round vintage forest. This guy has been so good forever. This guy's never played bad, I swear. This guy's never had a bad year in his entire history of CS. So how is it that Forrest is able to resist his own biology and compete at the highest level alongside players who were pretty much learning how to read when he first started clicking heads? And how long can he possibly keep it up? Look at them all, six, nine. One of them's gone, Forrest will finish him off, another one delivered. Nice. Body shots, all collected by Forrest, he's not oh. done! Four in quick succession! Now, for basically as long as there's been competitive Counter-Strike, there's been Forrest. But if you aren't familiar with the owner of probably the greatest beard in esports history, here's a few things you should know. He's a major winning CSGO legend, known for his incredible aim, and for having equally impressive eyebrow control. But in spite of Forrest's childish delight at opening Christmas presents, he remains a true boomer and a stickler for tradition. I would never, ever eat pizza ever again. Putting this disgusting pineapple on a pizza with a would be a disgrace for humani humanity, you know? Forrest is known throughout the community as a loyal friend and teammate, and as a fierce competitor who doesn't take himself too seriously. My next question, did it? <laughs> oh, look at that death stare. But in recent years, the brain-splattering rifler has evolved outside of the game, especially with the arrival of his first child. Congratulations on becoming a father. Thank you. Has it changed you as a person? Well, definitely. I'm scared of everything. <laughs> anyway, as likable as Forrest is, it's how he's played Counter-Strike over the past two decades that's earned him the respect and admiration of his peers. I think the fact that Forrest has been playing so long, um, aside from the fact of the, the level he's been performing at, right? There's a lot of players who have maybe played towards their like 30s, but maybe not at his level, um, is awesome. You know, I see his determination and his drive and who's to tell him that he can't keep playing? The main challenge he has is, okay, I have to stay up to date with the meta changes, with the, the updates to the game, gun changes. And if he's willing to do that, I don't see why he can't keep going. It's awesome. You see, Forrest's CS journey began in the glory days of 1.6, back when the M4A1 wasn't entirely useless and when he seemed incapable of growing any sort of facial hair at all. But it was during those baby-faced formative years that Forrest began to cement himself as one of the greatest aimers Counter-Strike has ever seen. 
What can Robin do? That bomb ticking oh, away. That grenade, hurt. that grenade was perfect there, but Robin will make his frag onto Khan. It's now Robin versus Forrest, and Forrest will come in. Gets the headshot. I'm not sure if uh, Robin knew exactly where he was, but either if, even if he did, Forrest was faster on the trigger. In 1.6, and some of this translates to CSGO, he had unreal aim, probably the best aim ever. Like just in terms of utterly, the peak that he could hit with his aim was unreal. Forrest wasn't just a one game pony though. Following his move to Nip, which came shortly before the release of Global Offensive, he proved that he was more than capable of popping melons on a new playground. Uh, already put a smoke down there as well. Here comes Zip, pops down into that CT spawn area. Now they push mid at the same time, but it's not going to work out very well. Forrest picks up a double in the middle and get right with a third, and suddenly they're planning double going into the site. It isn't going to work out. Freesto absolutely picks off Freiburg really easily, and then he's picked out himself by Forrest. The firing goes down to the bomb site, get right connects on JW, and it's going to be a two versus oh, two, which is from Forrest jumping on down. That is the true ninja style, and Forrest will finish it off with a triple kill. We might see them having to really start muscling their way forward, and Forrest is doing just that, getting the first, getting the second! Oh my god, Forrest, oh. and the hat trick! Wow! From August of 2012 to April of 2013, Nip established themselves as a dominant force, winning an unprecedented 87 land maps in a row. And a lot of their early success had to do with Get Right and Forrest's insatiable appetites for fragging. Let's say the first four or five months of that seven month span, Forrest was the second best player in the world. And he was had very sick aim. He had one of the sickest aims in the game. Then you've got Get Right coming behind, who's so good at clutches. This combo here won so many games for an IP and they were just unbeatable pretty much. But over the past eight years, CSGO has notoriously revealed itself to be a game of hot streaks and cold spells. We've seen teams and players burst onto the scene spectacularly, only to become victims of inconsistency a few months down the line. And that's what makes Forrest unique. You see, even as Nip's trophy haul started to slow down and his teammates' form was starting to dip, his penchant for clicking heads never did. But it has to be quick from phase. They have no kids, but Forrest in a lovely position. Watch it. Oh! What? Forrest! That was sick! But he finds the frag on Electro. Forrest needs to win that, and he does. He's almost unstoppable. He hasn't even reloaded. He's got six bullets right now, just running in and looking for the kills. He's gonna get one more headshot! Taking down Snip. Still has not reloaded. He's just... Oh! oh no! Stands, crouches, looks for the shot, finds the first headshot, and he gets the second one as well! Forrest comes through for NIP time and time again. A lot of people say like best aimer is like history of CS. For me, it's Forrest. This guy is literally the definition of aim. Like if you look at his like 1.6 frame movies and stuff, like he's always been good. You see, that's the thing. In the world of modern Counter-Strike, Forrest is practically a unicorn. He's lived to see contemporary after contemporary hanging up their mice or fading into obscurity as fresh young talent takes over the game. He's one of the very few players that cut their teeth in the 1.6 scene that are still playing CSGO professionally, let alone dropping jaws on the biggest stages. Forrest, I think that was through that little jumping. window at the top. Yeah, he caught him jumping, so nice shot from Forrest at least to pick up one kill. Oh, he does it again! And it's Forrest's consistency and longevity, not just his aim, that the community has come to recognize and appreciate. But he himself seems equally bemused by his immunity to the effects of age. It's really, really weird. I can't put it any different. Like Plopski, for example, was one or two years old when I won my first tournament in 2005, and I was a pro player, and he haven't even seen a computer. But now he's sitting next to me playing in the same team. It's, it's I'm not gonna lie, it's, uh, it's hella weird. So how is it that Forrest has been able to delay his own biological clock while others have decided to let it conk out? Well, to find out, we reached out yet again to Madison Klarkowski, our gamer brain studying expert at the University of Saskatchewan. So there is um, some cognitive decline with age. In fact, there is a lot of cognitive decline with age, which leads to increases in reaction time. But the differences between a 30-year-old or 32-year-old, I think, is Forrest is 32, and a 20-year-old isn't as extravagant as a lot of people, as a lot of um, you know, the esports community might assume over 10 years, 20 to 30, that difference in online play and tournaments, that difference gets eaten by ping. It's, it's, it's pretty trivial. They're more important factors. Like at how many years 
you needed to spend playing the game for 10 hours a day, how much time you have um, to dedicate to the game, how carpal tunnel you are, for example, how burnt out you are. Now, while Forrest's reactions aren't exactly what they once were, it's likely that the secret to his consistency isn't physical, but mental. You see, even if Forrest's aim does fail him, he has a game sense honed by thousands upon thousands of hours of experience that can guide him through virtually every in-game scenario. On top of that, Forrest remains as focused and dedicated to Counter-Strike as he was when he began terrorizing his opponents in 1.6 all those years ago. Forrest will pick him off. Brilliant round for Forrest. And that motivation makes this old man a dangerous adversary for any whippersnappers who might tread lightly upon his lawn. Summer could still catch this cross. At the very least, he'd get the information really early for attacker to help him retake, or he could just get the straight up kill. But if he dies, oh man. Oh no. Besides that, for now, the prioritization will be towards Ramp goes in, bangs through the door, gets the kill onto Cadian, peeks out no. the orb as well. The second as he picks up the frag onto Barupt, he just needs to deny the defuse and waste a little bit of time. A fantastic flurry of frags from Forrest no. as he wins the round. We're down to 35 seconds. Forrest making a jump out behind the smoke as Rez goes down and Forrest wants to continue. He's now on top of the train. He's gonna pick up a kill there on Henny, finding a second one and taking down Quesarado so far. A triple opening oh and Forrest turning around. It's a quad kill to take down Art. What a brutal entry into the bomb site. He just won versus Ford them on this site. And now Yuri in the back and Forrest with the ace to bring down Furia. What an impressive round. That is the equivalent of like a Leonardo da Vinci painting that we just saw. Everything from Forrest there was absolutely beautiful. I mean, Forrest has always been my like idol. They're like all of CS. And some of my teammates like say like, oh, he isn't that good anymore. And I always argue it every time. I was like, this guy is 30. He's 30 and still like out aiming like most people. That's the thing about Forrest. Across multiple iterations of the game, and the better part of 20 years, he has been setting a standard in Counter-Strike. He's proven that it is possible to have an enjoyable, long career without hopping from roster to roster, and he's done so by remaining one of the greatest fraggers ever to step onto the server. And that's something we might be lucky enough to see him do for many more years to come. So basically, age itself and the cognitive decline associated with it is less of an impact at 32 than some people might think. So we might be able to point to it when Forrest is 50 or 60 and not fragging out quite as hard as he used to, but it's still a little early to shuffle him off to like bingo just yet. He should still be performing, um, assuming that he's you know, able to overcome those other factors. He should still be performing just as well. There's a lot of situations where people would say, oh, the young guns are going to out-aim you and out-react you. Well, a lot of stuff at a, at a high level in Counter-Strike, there's a threshold to where once you're beyond that, you could still take these duels and win the fights you need to win. It comes down to holding on to confidence and, and being able to do the work, the minimum amount of work at the, at the least that you need to do, and sometimes going beyond, you could totally stay involved. At the end of the day, Forrest isn't just some terrifying geriatric capable of humbling Counter-Strike's younger generation. He's an inspiration. He's happily showing them that the lifespans of their careers can be extended with an endless passion and commitment to the game. Hopefully the age question has been deleted at least, uh, that there's no, that when you're 27, that's your time is up, it's time to go. That I showed to people that it is possible as long as you believe that you can do it. Great hold from Astralis. It's just a great job, isn't it? 30 seconds again for a one versus four. He's already got the one kill. Tapping away and taking down 25 seconds. He is looking for the straight ace clutch to try and get back in this game. That would be a bit of a miracle once again. He's picked up the bomb and he wants to go upstairs, make it a bit of noise. He's trying to see if he can juke them out and just be as noisy as possible. Maybe they're going to be looking the wrong way, but they're hiding in the corner. Oh, he's oh, no. him going down. How has he done it? Now it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Mage is coming in. He's just out of the bomb forest. He needs one more kill. We'll be in his story clutch if he can do it. The grenade landing on top. He's down to 50. Oh! I don't, 
I don't know how to explain why my headset cord does that. Like I saw people were like theorizing, they were like building lore in the comments as to why my headset cable was the way it is. And I'm like, I think it's just that I'm lazy and I spin around in my chair a lot. So I untangled it for this one. So I made sure I've been, I've been traumatized by that. This is, it's like as straight as an arrow this time, almost. <laughs>